Welcome back to Victory Kids Online. My name is Wen Singh and we are reaching the end of January. Can you believe it? Today, we'll be wrapping up the month with our last lesson on responsibility. We'll be learning about using our words wisely. And here's how we can start by using our words to praise God. We can give God our hearts and our minds by directing our attention to Him through praise and worship. Let's get our dancing shoes on and warm up our voices. La 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 la! Let's focus on the words of the song and mean it with our hearts when we sing it to God. Okay. 
Did you understand that? I said, hi. I'm Erica. How nice of you to join me today. This is such a fun game to play, and it's really funny. <laughs> Here's the rules. You put this thing in your mouth, and then you say, hey, and he knows how to get what you say. People have to guess what you say. You try it. Today, you're talking about this hard to reality. Sure, you can trust it if that is expected of you. Did you get that? Well, just in case, today we're talking about responsibility. Responsibility is showing you can be trusted with what is expected of you. I think you think we all be hardy. Hardy, hardy, what are you? Hardy, 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 hardy. Wow! It's really hard to communicate with that thing in your mouth! 
Could you understand anything I was saying? I never realized how important my words were until I had them taken away from me. Today's Bible story is all about how important words are and how we should use them. I think this will be a very important lesson for all of us to listen to. So, see you soon! Are you get it? Huh? Are you going? Huh? The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 29. There's an old saying you might have heard before. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Yeah, on the surface, that makes sense. I mean, you drop a heavy rock on my leg, I might end up with a big cast. But you yell at me, and I don't even get a scratch, right? Well, it's a little more complicated than that, as we're about to discover in a letter from the Apostle Paul to the church in Ephesus. Uh, let's see. What are the most important things they need to know? Paul had spent years teaching the church in Ephesus, but now he was in prison. So he wanted to remind the Ephesians what God had done for them and how it should change the way they treated each other, especially when it came to their words. Hmm. Don't let any evil talk come out of your mouths. Say only what will help to build others up and meet their needs. Then what you say will help those who listen. Your words are strong and powerful. They can make an incredible impact on the people around you, whether that's for good or not. Let's imagine what it might look like if we could actually see our words. You totally rocked it on the field today. Oh, now those words were like a nice pat on the back. Words can be incredibly encouraging. Hey, I know you've been feeling kind of sad. I'm always here if you need someone to listen. Mmm, that was comforting. Just like a cozy blanket and warm cocoa. But we don't always use our wordy superpowers for good. Wow, did you even look in the mirror this morning? Ouch, oh, that burned. Things are getting messy here. <laughs> and if you get really angry, well, that's when your words can be real zingers. You are so mean. I wish you weren't my brother. Ooh. Thoughtless words can shatter someone, break apart relationships. We all make mistakes with our words sometimes. We all end up hurting others with the things we say. But when that happens, sometimes we get a second chance to use our words wisely. I'm really, really sorry. That was an awful thing to say. Can you forgive me? Just like your words can hurt people and break relationships, words can also be uh, the glue that puts them back together. Your words can actually bring healing. Think about it. Every single one of us has the power to make or break somebody else's day with just a few words. Whether you write it, speak it, type it, or shape it, your words are an incredible tool. You may not have the money to buy somebody an expensive gift, but the note you write or the encouraging thing you say in the hall may mean even more to them. So think about your words, each one. Weigh them carefully. Picture actually what they might look like when they come out of your mouth, a knife that cuts deep or an encouraging pat on the back. Remember, Paul believed our words are so important to God that he wrote about it from prison. Don't let any evil talk come out of your mouths. Say only what will help to build others up and meet their needs. Then what you say will help those who listen. Sticks and stones and words are hurt. Have you heard that phrase before? Oh, <laughs> I said... Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Do you think that's true? I mean, 
I guess a word is never going to actually like break an arm or a leg, but can someone's words hurt you? I think so. How about this? Have you ever hurt somebody else with your words? I have. Why don't we do that? If we follow Jesus, it's our responsibility to use our words wisely. The Apostle Paul wrote, don't let any evil talk come out of your mouths. Say only what will help to build others up and meet their needs. Then what you say will help those who listen. Our words should be helpful. We should use them to encourage people. You're doing such a great job. I'm so proud of you. We should use words to comfort. It's going to be okay. When life gives you lemons, like lemonade. And you should definitely use your words without this thing. It's not always easy to control what you say, but a good place to start is to try and think before you speak. Think. Are these words helpful or hurtful? Do they build up or tear down? Take a few seconds, especially if you're mad or upset, to think before you say words that hurt. Here's the rule for life to remember today. Use your words wisely. Simple to say, not so simple to do. You're going to need God's help for sure. So, to sum up, sticks and stones are like lions, but words may also hurt. Hi, everybody! Here you go! Are you gonna? Huh? 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 Our words have the power to help or hurt others. That's why we should choose our words wisely before we speak. Are our words encouraging? Are they kind? Or will our words hurt someone? We can show God's love through our words too. So let's choose our words wisely. Let's take out our activity pages for this week to learn more about our words to build others up. For this first activity, let's take a look at the pictures on the left and write down what you would say in these situations on the speech bubbles that are on the right. Remember, think carefully about what you would say before writing them down. It should be words that are helpful and kind. Next, search for 10 encouraging words in the box below and circle them when you find them. When you are done, think about how you can use them in a sentence and commit to using them this week. On this next activity, there are two images. Sandpaper, which is rough, and cotton, which is soft. Write the hurtful words under the sandpaper image and write the kind words under the cotton image. Let's learn from this activity and choose nice things to say. When you are done, flip your Bibles and read five verses. Choose one of them to memorize and write it out from memory. Lastly, let's reflect on these statements. Take the ones that apply to you. Then think of three people you can encourage this week and write their names in the hearts below. Let's pray that God will help us to choose our words wisely before speaking so that we can show God's love through the things we say. I know you benefit from doing today's activity pages. Let's do them well. Have fun!
Good job for using your time wisely. I'm proud of you. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29 tells us that we should say only what will help to build others up and meet their needs. Even when you're angry or upset, you have a choice to choose what you want to say. Remember, words have the power to build someone up or bring someone down. So, let's think about what to say before speaking. When it's hard, we can always ask God to help us speak words that encourages others. God is always here to help us. But some of you may not know God. In order to have a relationship with God, you need to accept Him into your heart. And you can do so by saying a simple prayer. If you would like to have a relationship with God, you can repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear God, thank you for loving me. Please forgive me for the wrong things that I have done. I believe that Jesus died for me and rose again. Today, I invite you into my heart to be my Lord and Saviour. In Jesus' name, Amen! If you said that prayer for the first time, you just invited God into your heart and now He will be with you always. You are a precious child of God and He loves you so, so much. Right now, I'm going to end off today's lesson with a prayer. Close your eyes, children. Let's pray. Dear God, teach us to know the difference between wise and unwise words. We know that our words can be powerful. So teach us to be careful with what we say and help us, Lord, to be careful with what we say, uh, even in times when we feel upset, angry, or when we feel that life is unfair. Help us to live, act, and speak in ways that will allow others to trust us. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen! With that, we've come to the end of our lessons on responsibility. Here's a challenge for you. Choose to use your words wisely this week. It can be as simple as saying something encouraging to your friends in school this week or saying please and thank you to mom and dad every day. Let's be responsible in everything we say and do. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye!